So work from home and remote jobs are insanely popular right now. The pandemic gave people a taste of what working from home was like, and pretty much everybody wants a remote or semi-remote job now. And it's obvious why. You get more freedom, you get more control over your environment, and you get to spend more time with the people that you care about. And as somebody who has landed a remote job myself, and as somebody who specializes in helping other people land jobs, and I've helped hundreds of people do it, I'm gonna be sharing my best tips on how you can land a remote job in this video. So buckle up, remotely destroy that like button, and let's get into the first tip on this video, which is choosing the right remote job. Now, choosing the right career path, and even more importantly, the right job, is of the utmost importance. And there's probably three different types of people who are watching this video. The first type of person is someone who's extremely early on in their career, or they might even be looking for their very first job. The second type of person is somebody who is extremely ambitious, and they want to get a remote job so that they can have time to do other things like start their own business on the side. And the third type of person is somebody who's in a part of their life where they want kind of like a chill job where they can kind of work from home, and they can do a good job, and they can make some pretty decent money, but they really just want something where they're not going to be going into an office every day, spending a bunch of time in traffic, and they basically want to focus more on their lifestyle. And to all three of those types of people, I have the same advice, which is to go where the opportunity is. This is something I say over and over again on this channel. It's basically the slogan of the channel. And what that basically means is choose companies, industries, careers, and jobs that have a lot of opportunity. If you position yourself in an industry like technology, for instance, there's going to be a ton of opportunities. If you can get a job for a company like Apple, even if it's one of the lowest jobs on their list, like a customer service rep, that is going to open a lot of opportunities for you. If you go into a career where there's really high demand, something like tech sales or digital marketing, that is gonna open a ton of opportunities for you. And if you go for a job that's going to teach you in-demand skills, something like appointment setting, again, that is gonna give you a ton of opportunities. And no matter what your goal is, you are going to have more leverage because you have in-demand skills. And this is basically like a cheat code because you're getting paid to learn these in-demand skills, right? A lot of people will go to college for four, maybe even up to 12 years in order to learn in-demand skills. But if you're smart, you can get paid to learn skills that are just as valuable. So the career that you go for, AKA the vehicle that you choose, is going to make a massive difference in how much money you make, the lifestyle you get, the benefits you get, et cetera. And you'll notice that a lot of the most in-demand careers are the ones where it's easiest to get remote jobs. And that's because as an employee that has these in-demand skills, you have a lot more leverage. And companies know that a lot of people want remote jobs, so in order to sweeten the pot, to attract the best talent, they're going to offer you these remote positions. Now, this is honestly a little bit of a complicated subject. You know, choosing the perfect career for you is something that, you know, I could probably do an entire month series on, but I'm actually gonna be doing a three-day live event challenge this weekend where I'm gonna be helping people choose the perfect career for them. And I'll put the link to sign up for that down in the description as well as the pinned comment below, but more on that later. So step two, once you've chosen the career is you want to create your MVP resume. Now, MVP does not stand for most valuable player. It stands for minimum viable product. So a lot of people will spend way too much time on their resume instead of doing what they should be doing, which is applying to jobs. They'll think, oh, I don't have the skills necessary, or I don't have the right experience, or I don't have this or that. And so it'll take months and months before they even start applying. And this is the exact opposite of what I teach. And this is why me and my business partners can sometimes get people jobs in something like seven days, 10 days, 14 days, is because we have people start applying for these jobs right away. So your resume is something that can be fine-tuned and updated over time. And instead of spending three months writing your resume, what you should be doing is creating a minimum viable product for the resume, start sending it in, and then track the data that you get from that resume and optimize it using that data. Now, one thing you definitely want to do is make sure that you have what's known as an ATS-friendly resume. So one mistake that I see people making all the time is they'll have a super creative, colorful resume that isn't ATS friendly. And ATS stands for Applicant Tracking System. So this is something I'll be giving away in this three-day live challenge that I'll be doing. And it's a really good ATS-friendly resume that thousands of people have used to get jobs. And if you get an ATS-friendly resume, that's probably going to increase your chances of success by like 500%. Now, one thing you want to do on this resume is you want to look at the skills that companies are looking for and then quickly generate your own experience when it comes to those skills. And the way you want to think about this is how long would it take 
take you to learn that skill. Now, if it's a really difficult skill, something like programming, for instance, obviously that's going to take you a little bit of time to learn. But if it's something that's much easier, you should put it on your resume while you're generating the skills. And we'll get to that a little bit later on in the portfolio creation process. But now we're going to move on to step three, which is you are going to start applying right away. So you're going to start looking on Google jobs for job postings that match the career you're trying to get into. And you're going to start applying for these job postings. Now, one mistake that I see all the time is people will see, oh, you need one to three years of experience in order to apply for this job. So therefore they don't apply for it. Now, this is a common mistake that I see, but in reality, if it's an entry level job or a job that only requires one to three years of experience, you should still apply for it. And I have seen this over and over again, where people will land these jobs, treat the one to three years of experience, not as a requirement, but as a preference. And if you're somebody who has a really good portfolio built out, which I'm going to show you how to do here in a few moments, then the one to three years of experience really doesn't matter. But in this step, you definitely want to figure out what are the skills the companies are looking for. And then you want to move on to step number four, keeping in mind that you're continuing to apply for these jobs and you want to learn the necessary skills. Now, this does not mean that you need to become a master of these skills. What you want to do instead is use what's known as the 80-20 rule or the Pareto's principle. And this is basically where 20% of your actions lead to 80% of the results. So you can actually get pretty proficient at just about any skill out there in somewhere around 10 to 20 hours. And the way you do this is not by passively watching a bunch of YouTube videos or passively watching some kind of course on Udemy. The way you do this is by actively building something, applying those skills in real time. And that's what you're going to do in step number five, which is you are going to build out your portfolio and you're going to be building it while you're actively learning. Now, step number five is where you do want to try to get a little bit creative. You want to build a portfolio that really showcases that you have the skills that you say you have, or at the very least, it showcases that you can rapidly learn those skills. So one thing, for instance, that my friend Josh did in his IT course for course careers, which has worked incredibly well, is he actually has you build your own ticketing system. And if you're applying for IT jobs, what that showcases is not only are you going to know how to use their ticketing system, but you literally know how to build your own. Nice. So that's a very creative way of showing that you know your stuff. So it's worth it to spend a little bit of time coming up with good ideas here to showcase that you have the skills that you say you have. Now, you don't actually have to build out your own website or anything like that when it comes to your portfolio. You can actually host it completely free on an app like Notion, which is not the sponsor of today's video. But you can also build out your own website if you want to. And a really great way of showcasing your portfolio is to actually make a video that you put on Notion, for instance, but not only showcases the project, but also talks about your thought processes behind building it. Now, the portfolio is incredibly important because this is how you can showcase those skills so that you can get ahead of the people who went to school and got a college degree. Because a lot of the time, the stuff that you learn in college is not the stuff that they're actually looking for in the real world. And I think it goes without saying that the way that you learn the skills that they're actually looking for is you look at the job posting, right? Look at the job description. And then you're gonna move on to step number six is you're going to keep applying, but in different ways. So I mentioned Google Jobs, and that's a really good job board to start with. You can also use LinkedIn. And honestly, if you limited me to one platform, it would have to be LinkedIn. And there's also a bunch of different niche websites. So for instance, if you're applying for digital marketing jobs, there's a bunch of different niche digital marketing job boards. And same thing goes for tech sales, etc. So you can start applying on all of those different niche websites as well. And another thing you can start doing is you can actually start networking. Now, networking is sort of a long term play, but it's honestly the most effective way of getting jobs, especially if you're going for an exclusive job that's difficult to get. So networking in person is really good. That's a great way to do it. But an easy way to start networking is to start posting content on LinkedIn. And basically, you can post content that's relevant to the industry, company, career, etc. that you're going for. So I've talked about this before on the channel, but Della, who's somebody who I interviewed on this channel, who was able to land a $100,000 tech sales job in about a month and a half, started posting about the cybersecurity industry on her LinkedIn. And she made really insightful posts and kind of stayed up to date with the news and all that sort of thing 
about cybersecurity. And that's how she was able to get her dream company to actually reach out to her, right? She didn't reach out to them. They reached out to her because she started making these posts and she added a bunch of people in the cybersecurity industry. So that is one of the easiest and most scalable ways that you can start networking. Now, don't get me wrong, this is not a get a job in one week type of strategy. Networking typically is going to take a long period of time, but this is one of those things that's absolutely worth doing. So while you're building out these portfolios, while you're learning the skills, you can also start doing research on the industry and simply posting whatever you find on your LinkedIn. And then you're gonna move on to step number seven, which is nail the interviews. Now, I know that there's a lot of introverts to watch this channel and I know that interviews can be extremely nerve wracking, but the best way for you to nail the interview is to be able to speak the language of the position that you're applying for. And the best way for you to be able to speak the language is to build out that portfolio and learn the correct skills. So for instance, if you're applying for a job for a YouTube channel, you want to know what AVD APV and CTR stands for. AVD stands for average view duration, APV stands for average percentage viewed, and CTR stands for click-through rate. And these are things you would absolutely have to know if you're applying to be a content strategist on YouTube, for instance. So you really want to learn the language of whatever position that you're applying for. And if you can casually and insightfully speak in this type of language, they will know that you know what you're talking about. So if you're applying for a tech sales position, you would probably talk about CRM, which is customer relationship management software. If you're applying for an operations management position, you'd wanna talk about different software like Asana, ClickUp, Basecamp, etc. I think you get the idea here. Make sure that you understand the language of the position you're applying for and make sure that you use that language during the interview. Now, a great way that you can learn this type of language is to go to different forums of people who are already working in the career. And you'll notice that they talk about these things quite a bit. And if there's any words that you don't understand, make sure to look them up and make sure to understand them. Now, another thing you can do to really nail the interview is to build a brand story. This is where you basically talk about why you're so passionate about whatever position you're applying for. So for instance, when I used to be a pharmacist, I would always talk about how I'm really passionate about pharmacy because of the fact that my dad had a heart attack at a young age. And because of the fact that there were medications he was taking, that extended his life for a very long period of time. Now, step number eight is realize that it's all a numbers game. If you make the best resume ever, the best portfolio ever, you're an incredible interviewer, you are gonna have a higher percentage of job offers. But realistically speaking, if you're not the best at all three of those things, you can make up for it by simply applying to more jobs. And at the end of the day, almost everything in life is a numbers game, from making YouTube videos, to applying to job offers, to all sorts of other things. And you can compensate for skill by simply working harder and applying to more jobs. Now, again, these are all things that I'm going to cover extensively in this three-day challenge that I'm gonna be doing live this weekend. So I highly recommend checking that out. There is a small cost to it. Typically, people will pay somewhere between $300 to $600 an hour for my consultations. And I'm gonna be giving away the most common questions and the most common tips that I give to people in those consultation sessions. And I'll also be answering your questions live. So definitely check that out. I'm gonna put it down in the description as well as the pinned comment below. And if you guys really like it, it might be something that I do many times in the future. Check this video out right here if you want to check out some of the best remote jobs that you can get.